Uh-huh. You went to IU, yep. right? Now you got a lot of people that uh, say, uh, forget about school, you know, they're drop idiots. out of school. They're, they're idiots. So you think they're, they're idiots. idiots. Tell me why. Um, if you're gonna have and run a business, if you don't understand accounting, you're already behind the eight ball. Can't you hire a guy that's, that knows how to But then they, they still have to communicate to you, right? I mean, there's people that don't understand the, the concept of, you know, the difference between profits and cash. You know, oh, your accountant might tell you, you're profitable, but your cash is going down. You know, not understanding um, the breakdown. And, and when you don't... Do you think you need college to learn that? Yeah, I think you do, right? Because it, it may not, for some people, look, if you're so self-motivated that you can take an online course in accounting and teach yourself everything, you're way ahead of the game anyways. But most people aren't. And I'm not saying you have to go to Indiana. I'm not saying go to an expensive school. I don't care if you go to a community college and take accounting and, and spend 99 bucks for the class. Just, you know, spending the money forces you to be more obligated to do it. But accounting, finance, lesser extent marketing, sales if the school offers that. These are all the, that's the language of business. And so while it's possible to teach yourself these things and while it's possible to hire them, Mm -hmm. when you're starting your own company, you don't wanna have to spend money hiring an accountant. And so your cost of opening up a business drops, but even more important than all that, that's, that's the blocking and tackling, that's the language of business. You know, the thing I learned at Indiana that was more important than anything else, I learned how to learn and learning became far more important to me because the one certainty in business is that it's always going to be changing the if if you're not always learning if to this minute if if i'm not continuously learning if i'm not just absorbing as much as i can absorb someone else is going to kick my ass right so you talk about paranoia the the greatest source of your paranoia should be knowledge if someone else knows more than you do and if you're not learning, if you don't know the learn, if you don't know how to learn, if you don't have a thirst for learning and acquiring information, you're you're SOL. You know, people like to say, you know, the only stupid questions are the one you don't ones you don't ask, and that's not right, right? Because the questions you ask tell me, tell whoever more about you than anything else you do. Because in particular, it tells me about your preparation. If you ask me questions about just basic things that you should have known and you should have down to a science that's gonna disqualify you almost more than anything. Do you think there needs to be a healthy level of paranoia? Oh, absolutely. There needs to be. Oh yeah, I mean, I always say, you know, for every one of my businesses, I I said, what would I do to kick my own ass? You right, so whatever business you have, there's somebody trying to put you out of business. There's somebody trying to to take a bite out of Mm -hmm. your business, Mm -hmm. and it's better for you to figure out how they're gonna do it rather than they do it. Um, And so yeah, that's being paranoid. And so you have to be paranoid. You have to anticipate other people's next moves, and you can't ever you know downplay the competition. Um, I was at a business plan competition this morning for at a college, and they were kind of being dismissive of the competition. And so you can't ever do that. You know they're out there trying to take you down, and they're not just going to sit still. And, and if you're good, really, really good, you're going to inspire them to work even harder, faster, better. And so you have to be, you know, very self-aware of what you're good at and what other people are good at. And, you know, a healthy dose of paranoia makes a big difference, is very helpful. If you're not always learning, if, to this minute, if, if I'm not continuously learning, if I'm not just absorbing as much as I can absorb, someone else is going to kick my ass. The, the greatest source of your paranoia should be knowledge. If someone else knows more than you do, and if you're not learning, if you don't know the lear- if you don't know how to learn, if you don't have a thirst for learning and acquiring information, you're, you're SOL. There's certain guys that have the genetics to jump out of the gym, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. There's certain guys, you know, that you know when they golf, they have the muscle memory and, and the discipline. You know, Dirk um, Davinsky may not be the most talented guy in the NBA, but his discipline and his focus to do what's necessary to be successful, he's willing to do and combine it with being seven feet tall and being skilled, you know, it makes him an amazing basketball player. So it's, it's understanding what your skill set is, finding the right place to use those skills, and then going for it. You know, will that make you 250 grand? It depends if you pick the right industry. But whatever industry you pick, if you outwork everybody, if you try to be a little smarter than everybody, if you try to be a better salesperson than everybody, if you try to be better prepared than everybody, you've got your best chance. Because if you don't do it and somebody else does, you know, I have the saying, work like someone's trying to take it all away from you. You know, work, mm-hmm. I actually work like someone's spending 24 hours, working 24 hours to take it all away from you. Mm-hmm. And, and that's kind of the way I look at it. 
what would you say is the number one reason why people fail? Not necessarily why they make it, the complete opposite. Right, lack of brains, lack of effort. Lack of brains, lack of effort. Yeah, they just, they don't do the work, they don't learn, you know. When you walk in the room, when you start a business and you start to talk about somebody, you're, you're never in a vacuum with no competition. And if there's gonna be competition, that means somebody else knows your business as well as you do when you get started. And if you walk into a competitive environment and they still know more about the business than you do and more about your customers, you're gonna lose. And, but most people don't consider that. They don't do the work. They don't learn more about their industry. They don't know even about their business. I mean, and so you've gotta put in the effort to know more about your industry than anybody else. Um, and that's, that's the brains part and that's the effort part as well. Because look, if you're competing with me, you, you better know what you're doing, otherwise I'm gonna kick your ass, you know, and you're not gonna outwork me. And so, you know, the combination is usually what kills businesses early on more than anything. But my dad was always like, if you want something, you have to earn it. And to his credit, he never said, no, you can't do that. So whether it was selling garbage bags, baseball cards, stamps, whatever it was, he, he never held me back. And so I think that was as important as anything. And you know, sometimes being young and trying things, you're so naive and you don't know any better, all you do is learn. And if you fail, it doesn't matter. And so whether I was nine, 10, 12, 16, 21, the failures were irrelevant. And you know, whether you're you know, nine, 12, 16, 21, 22, 24, you know, I'm sleeping on the couch. You know, I have a car with a hole in the floorboard. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm living like a bum and, and like a student. And so what did I have to lose? And so I think that influenced me as much as anything. So, it was, you know, my dad was like, go for it. You know, don't, why not? What have you got to lose? Yeah, go so, do so do you think like, let's just say if we put 10 guys here, you interview them, mm -hmm. okay? You could within a five, 10 minute, minute interview say, this dude's not gonna make it as an entrepreneur. Yeah, I mean, I can, I can typically tell, right? I can tell um, but by um, their passion, I can tell by their focus, I can tell by their preparation. You know, there, there's a whole realm of things in any business. Here, you know, here's, here's the business you're in, and here's a thousand things that influence whether or not you're gonna be successful. You know, through my experience in businesses, I can put myself in his position and say, okay, here are 900 of the thousand things that he has to be aware of, and then go through and ask. And by how many of those or her um, issues they've been able to address already, that kind of gives me a sense of how hard they're willing to work. You know, and I can tell by the questions they ask me. So all I have to do is say, okay, what do you want to know? But I'm curious, if, if you and I were buddies in high school, uh -huh. say we're 14 years old, 15 uh -huh. years old, and we know each other, uh -huh. would I bet on you being who you are today? No chance. Really? No chance. Tell me why. I mean, I had my, I had my good friends and, you know, we, we hung out and I was a hustler. There's, there's no question I was a hustler. And, and Even in high school? Oh yeah, and into business in a big way. Um, but I don't, I don't think people saw to me. It wasn't like people looked at me and go, oh, he's, he's destined to succeed. So in high school, you were the fun guy. Were you? Were you? Were you always the, the guy that made people laugh? Were you no, very competitive? I was, just, you the I was, I was always competitive. I was, guy? I was into sports. Not. I wasn't great at it. I was just decent. Um, wasn't technology guy. I mean, I, I was into learning. I was. I was. I was a business guy. I was. I was the guy reading about business all the time. Reading business books all the time. You know, going to junior achievement. I was a junior achievement geek. Um, Why though? Why were you reading business books? Because I want. That's what I knew. I mean, I was wired that I always. You know, I started my first business when I was 12. I was buying and selling um, baseball cards, buying and selling stamps, anything I could do to make money, I, I was hustling and trying to do. So I was into business, but I, I, not so much where it was, all my friends were into it with me, so they wouldn't know. Do you think there's a proven formula that if a brand rookie guy, he's got a lot of ambition, he's got a lot of desire, but not a lot of knowledge and how to, do you think if he follows a formula, he's guaranteed to make it as no, an entrepreneur? No, no, no. Okay, no so you don't believe there's a guarantee no, to make it? No, because who knows who you're going to be competing with? So if you put two two people both following the same formula, both in the same industry, right? Which one wins? You know, maybe they both can win and both be successful, but you know, so I don't I don't think there's a default default template for success, but I think there's things that you can do to put yourself in the best position to succeed.